Hi right, everyone, I want to share with you guys about Born Again as um, hoping that you will be blessed as I was blessed when God, when the Lord uh, revealed to me or showed me this, um, this truth of Born Again and what is the meaning and what is the meaning of Born Again according to the Word of God. So what I'm about to share with you is just a hundred percent Word of God. Okay, um, not my my thought, but the Word of God. So that I will, won't be held accountable to anything that I'm sharing. Okay. So, uh, what is born again, and why is it important? According to the book of John, chapter three, verses one to five, this is the first time was mentioned born again by Jesus. Um, uh, in John chapter three, verses one to five, it talks about a man named Nicodemus who came to Jesus at night and. Uh, he said to Jesus, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one could perform the miraculous sign that you are doing if God were not with you. All right? And then Jesus, in reply, Jesus said, I tell you the truth, that no one will see the kingdom of God unless he's born again. And then Nicodemus, with his confusion, he said to Jesus, oh, How can a man go back into his mother's womb a second time? And then Jesus responded by saying to him, I tell you the truth, no one will enter the kingdom of God unless he's born of water and spirit. First time he said, no one can enter the kingdom, no one can see the kingdom of God unless they are born again, which if you can't see, you can't enter. Yeah. And then after Nicodemus' confusion and his response, Jesus replied again by trying to make uh, it uh, more clear to Nicodemus that it is, he's not talking about uh, natural born again a natural birth but a born again that is of water and spirit not of through the natural birth of your mom but it's through water and spirit okay you cannot born again without any of those two you have to be born again of water and spirit these two so that you will be born again all right so as we continue on uh let's talk about what is born again uh, according to the word of god and Mm, why is it important for us to be born again? Because of easy, Jesus claimed that we cannot enter the kingdom of God unless we are born again. And unless you think you can enter the kingdom of God without being born again, that will make Jesus a liar, is it? But it's not. That is, uh, Jesus is not a liar. He is the way, the truth, and the life. Okay? So what is born again according to the word of God? In order for us to understand, according to the book of, let's look at Colossians, uh, Colossians chapter 1, verses 18, he says, And he is the head of the body, the church, he is the beginning and the firstborn from the dead, so that in everything he might have the supremacies. Easy, simple, straightforward uh, scriptures, it says that Jesus is the head of the body, which is the church, the beginning and the firstborn from the dead. Firstborn from the dead. So, this claim here that Jesus is the first born from the dead, first resurrection, resurrected from the dead. How can Jesus be the first born from the dead, first resurrected from the dead, when people in the Old Testament has been uh, resurrected before? The reason why is because Jesus is the only one that resurrected and never to experience death again. Anyone who was resurrected before Christ in the Old Testament, their body is still in the grave and they're still there till today but it's only Christ who still live now and forever he will never die is the resurrected king he is the first born from the dead never to experience death again never will be so Jesus is the first born from the dead he was born from Mary but now he's born again but through death hmm? from death he was born again he was born from Mar through Mary now he's born through his death born again but let's not stop there let's continue on what does the other scripture says first Peter chapter 1 verses uh, verses 3 he says blessed be to God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who according to his great mercy has caused us to born again to living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead easy straightforward that is through uh, 
God's great mercy has caused us to born again to the living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, through the firstborn from the dead, through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, through Jesus born again from the dead. It is through his born again that we are born again to living hope. Through his resurrection from the dead that we are born again to living hope. Hopefully you understand what I'm trying to say here. Okay. Again, he says that we, uh, his great mercy, God's great mercy has caused us to born again to living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. It is through his resurrection from the dead that we are born again. Okay. For his resurrection from the dead. Let's look at First Peter, chapter one, uh, chapter one, verses twenty-three. It says, "For you have been born again, not of perishable seed, but of imperishable seed, through the living and enduring word of God." And this scripture just talks about that we are born again, but of imperishable seed. We are born again of imperishable seed. Which is through the living and the enduring word of God. What is this imperishable seed that we are born again of? And to understand this, we have to look at First Corinthians fifteen thirty six to thirty eight and forty four to forty forty two to forty four. It says, "How foolish! What you sow does not come to life unless it dies. When you sow, you do not plant the body that will be." But just a seed, perhaps of wheat or something else. But God gives it a body as He has determined, and to each kind of seed gives its own body. 42 to 44. So will it be with the resurrection of the dead. The body that is sown is perishable, it is raised imperishable. It is sown in dishonor, it is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness, it is raised in power. It is sown a natural body, it is raised a spiritual body. Okay? So, a seed cannot come to life unless it dies. It cannot come to life unless it dies. Okay? So, this seed is was sown perishable. But when it comes to life or when it was raised, it was raised imperishable. It was sown or died in weakness, but it was raised in power. It was sown in dishonor, but when it was raised, it was raised in glory. When it was sown, it was sown a natural body when, when it was raised in spiritual body. Okay? That's what it says. Unless the seed dies, it will not come to life. So will it be with the resurrection of the dead. 42. So will it be with the resurrection of the dead. A seed that must die in order to come to life. But what is this seed? Does it talk about us? No, no, no. Let's look at Galatians chapter 3 verse 16. It talks about the promises we are spoken to Abraham and to your seed. The scriptures does not say and to your seeds meaning many people but into your seed meaning one person who is Christ so what Paul is saying that uh, the promise was spoken to Abraham by God uh, the scripture does not say into your seeds meaning many people but into your seed meaning one person who is Christ so this imperishable seed is Jesus the seed that must die so that it can come to life. It was died in what? It was died in per uh, perishable, but when it was raised, it was imperishable. He cannot die again. When he was died or when he was sown in dishonor, he was raised in glory. When he was sown in weakness, he was raised in power. When he was sown in the natural body, he was raised in his spiritual body. Okay? So will it be with the resurrection from the dead who is Christ the imperishable seed so if we call back to the verse it says we are born again not of perishable seed but of imperishable seed a seed that must die so that it can come to life 
we are born again of the resurrected resurrection of Jesus Christ, the seed from the dead. A seed that must die so they come to life. It is through his resurrection, the resurrected the seed, Jesus Christ, from the dead. Which is also said, the verse to make it more. Let's go back to it. First Peter chapter 1 verse 3. For you have been born again, not of perishable seed, but of imperishable seed. Through the living and enduring word of God. Through the living and enduring word of God. Through the living, Jesus. The way, the truth, and the life. He is the life. The living he is the enduring word and the enduring word of God. He is the living and enduring word of God. Jesus is the word of God. The enduring word of God. All things will pass away, but his word will endure forever. Christ will endure forever. We will live forever. So if I'm going to read that verse more clearer. For you have been born again. Not of perishable seed, but of imperishable seed. A seed that must die and come to life. Who is Christ? The living and enduring word of God. The seed. Again, in Galatians, it says that he is the only seed that was promised. Who is Christ? The living and enduring word of God. We are born again of imperishable seed. Through Christ, the living and enduring word of God imperishable the seed that died and come to life again we are talking about the resurrection so born again is through the death and the resurrection of jesus christ which is if we look at uh let's look at the book of romans chapter 6 verses 3 to 5 how do we die with christ how do we born again how do we born to living hope through the resurrection of jesus christ how do we die with christ remember it says we are born ye Unless you are born of water and spirit, unless you are die with Christ and come to life. Don't you know that all of us who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were therefore buried with him through baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead. Through the glory of the Father, we do may live a new life. Romans chapter 6, verses 3 to 5. Don't you know that all of us who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were therefore buried with him through baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead, through the glory of the Father, we do may live a new life. It's only through baptism that we die with Christ. Only through baptism. For those who are baptized into Christ. We're baptized into his death. It is This is the only way for us to die with Christ. So that we can be, therefore, buried with him. So that, in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead. We do may live a new life, may resurrect it together with Christ, may born again from the dead, born again through baptism, we die with Christ. This is what Jesus says. Go into all nations and make disciples, baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and teach them to obey every commandment that I have teach you. It is a command. That when they go to all nations and make disciples, once they repent, once they repent, baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, which is Jesus Christ. They are free in one name, the name that is above all other names, who is Jesus Christ. Born again, so that they can start growing. They are born again, born to a little baby, so they can start growing in Christ. That's when you start living your walk spiritually. That's why it says, born in water and spirit. Born again in water and spirit. Unless, born again in water and spirit. Born in water, death and spirit come to life. So, a natural body resurrected a spiritual body. We baptize through a natural body. But if we are resurrected in a spiritual body in us. Baptized is born again. It is the only way we die with Christ so that we can be born again through his resurrection together with Christ. I hope you're blessed. Uh, and I will share again, continue on.
to reveal and to prove from the word of God why we are born again. Bless.